Those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat the them. smallest beat moments beat can have the biggest beat impact beat on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Then, no lo puedo hacer. DMC, life in your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. together now we can make it better now come on can we do it yeah we know that we can we we'll open up cause we know how to jump we we'll roll it out roll it out cause we know how to skate we we'll cut it down cut it down we know what to eat we we'll swap it out we we'll eat healthy stuff can we do it yeah we we'll know that we can can we do it do it just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier search we can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day my life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Welcome to this week's edition of The Message. I am your host, Donatus King, and we'll spend this next hour with one purpose in mind, and that one purpose is delivering the message that God is almighty. Everything that ever was, is now, or ever will be was made by God. Everything that ever happened, is happening right now, or ever will happen, was made to happen by God. God has a master plan for all time and all creation. God is almighty. The message is brought to you by, is produced by the Society of Knowledge Incorporated. The Society is an interdenominational religious spiritual organization. Our members come from various different religious and spiritual backgrounds. We have various different religious and spiritual beliefs. Although we come from different backgrounds and have different beliefs, there is one belief that we share in common. There is one piece of knowledge that we hold in common. And that's the knowledge that there is a being. By no matter what name we may have been taught to call that being, by no matter what name we may have come to know that being, whether that name be God, Allah, Yahweh, Jesus, Buddha, nature, by no matter what name, we know that there is indeed a being that possess not some of the power, not most of the power, but all of the power. That's the reason we do this show and the only reason we do this show to deliver the message that that being that personally I call God, that that being is indeed almighty. Today is July the 6th, 2017 and I remind you of that fact because this show as we are on most Thursdays, we are live. And I remind you of that fact because this show is an open discussion. It's a two-way conversation. For those of you that are watching on television, you see the telephone number that's on your screen. I invite you to use that number. Call in and join this discussion. For those of you that are watching on Facebook, I invite you to join the discussion. Post a comment, and we'll do our best to answer the comment as they're posted on Facebook. I invite you to join this discussion, 
not only to share knowledge, but also if there's something that's going on in your church, your temple, your masjid, your mosque, your synagogue, your place of worship, and you want to share that information with the world, call in and share that information with the world. If there's something that's going on in your nonprofit organization and you want to share that information with the world, call in and share it with the world. More important, at least to me, more important than what's going on in your place of worship, more important than what's going on in your nonprofit organization, if there's something that God has done for you in your life, a miracle that God has worked in your life. And I say the word miracle, and I, I mean that word literally, a miracle that God is, because the God that I'm here to tell you about works miracles. Not only miracles that you read about that happened thousands of years ago in the Bible or in the Quran or any other religious work or historical work, not miracles that happened a long time ago, but the God I'm here to tell you about is working miracles today. July 6, 2017, God is working miracles. And I encourage you to call in and share your testimony because it may be somebody that's going through something similar to what you went through. You know, maybe you have some health problems and God worked a miracle and healed your body. The same way that God healed your body, God can heal someone else's body that's watching this show right now. So if God worked a miracle in your life, call in, share your testimony. Your testimony might be the one thing that someone's watching this show right now or that'll watch it when it's rebroadcast or watch it later on. The one thing that they need to hear to encourage them, to strengthen them, to help them to hold on. So call in, share your testimony with the world. And as I said earlier, and I keep saying, you hear me say it, share it with the world, because I stated a little while ago, this show is being seen live around the world right now via Facebook, and it'll be rebroadcast, and it'll still beam all around the world. So call in and join this discussion. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. I, I'm excited, I'm happy, I'm pleased uh, to have in studio tonight uh, two gentlemen that were on the show last week, uh, and we started the discussion about the conflict between religion and spirituality in the black community, the conflict between religion and spirituality in the black community. So I, I invite you to call in, join the discussion, uh, and, you know, we don't have a, a whole lot of rules, but one of the rules that we have, if there's something that's said on the show that you disagree with, uh, you have a difference of opinion, that's fine to express your opinion, but we want to keep it, we can disagree without being disagreeable. So call, call in, uh, post your comments, and I'm, uh, we have quite a few folks I've seen looking at uh, Facebook right now, uh, Sister Johnson, Brother Keith, Brother Bell, Brother Ryan, Sister Joseph, uh, Sister Leon, Sister Amant. Uh, oh, man, we're a whole lot of folks are joining in on Facebook. Thank you all for joining in, and I want to give a shout-out. We have Sister Williams uh, out of Indianapolis. Uh, thank you for viewing the show. Uh, and all of our, again, this is worldwide, so we thank everybody for joining us. So that's enough of me talking. Let's get right into welcoming our guests. Uh, welcome, brothers. Welcome. We have to my immediate Thanks left. We have to my immediate left, the Divine Prince Ty Emeka. How you doing, Prince? All is a blessing. And uh, to his left, we have Brother Joshua Tanner. How you doing, brother? Doing well. All is a blessing. All right. Okay, well, we're going to... Uh, just start off, and uh, for those of you that watched last week, uh, the prince is actually a voodoo uh, priest, and we're going to start off uh, a little bit more information, background about the religion of voodoo, and also about the, uh, the house of the divine prince that's located here in the city of New Orleans, the state of Louisiana. But before we do that, understand we do have a caller. Let's take our caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, good evening. How you doing, my sister? I'm doing well. How are you, Brother Chris? Uh, I'm doing okay. All right. Um, 
you know, we, we're not going to have the announcements. We're not going to have the board up because we have some logistical problems as far as having guests in the studio and putting the board up. So why don't you just tell us uh, about uh, all the work that you're doing out here in the community, brother, with your uh, Bible study and, and the rest of that. Okay, I'm doing um, the Bible study, the Cope line, um, the prayer line. It's from the Iowa uh, I forgot what time. All right. Well, I tell you, brother, I have I have all of that uh, at the office. So any, as brother Chris was saying, he operates, he maintains a prayer line. So if you ever feel in the need of having someone to pray with you, you can give him a call. And brother Chris, that phone number. Five zero four eight six six five zero four two Monday and Wednesday. All right, so that's 504-866-5042 for the prayer line. Uh, also, a COPE line. COPE line and the Bible study. All right. All right, Brother Chris. And, uh, and please call 311 for um, hurricane evacuation. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, that, it's that time of the year. And I understand, uh, I was looking at the news last night. I think they have... Uh, something that's forming down in the, in the uh, I don't know if it's in the Gulf yet, but I think yeah, it's in the Atlantic. All right. And so in the New Orleans area, called call 311 between the hour of um, 8, 8, 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. All right, Brother Chris, as always, thank you, brother. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And I did get that video that you had posted, and uh, I hope that maybe next week we can post that video. Uh, that was uh, something that you had recorded. Okay. All right, brother. Thank you, Chris. All right. God bless, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's, get into, uh, let's get into our discussion, and uh, we're going to start out. Uh, Prince, let's start out with just an, an overview of the religion of voodoo. Absolutely. The word voodoo, V-O-O-D-O-O, -O -O -O, is actually a Fon, F-O-N word. It, Fon is an ethnic group in West Africa, and it means spirit. Uh, when we say voodoo, we're using a very generic general term, just like when we say Christian or Christianity. It doesn't specify if you're Catholic, if you're uh, non-denominational, if you're Baptist, if you're evangelical. So voodoo is a word that encompasses all African, but primarily West African spiritual, cultural, ethnic tradition. And when I say ethnic tradition, um, on your last show we talked about God speaking to me, and we never covered exactly what it is that he said All right. and the first thing he said was are you willing to put down everything you think you know and follow me and that was a difficult thing to hear at that time being an evangelical Christian following the, the Bible following the pastor following the teachings of my parents but God asked me to put down everything that I thought that I knew that I thought that I understood my pastor's understanding and my parents' understanding, the words understanding, the world's understanding, and allow him to show me what real spirit was. Uh, and of course, I agreed. And it was from there that the journey of self discovery began. First, God said, Know yourself. Who are you? Where do you come from? And many of us as Africans here in America have no knowledge of who we are. Um, even more egregious, I'll say in the last 30, 40 years with the absentee fathers, the broken homes, many don't even know who their dad is or who their dad's parents or grandparents or what their family uh, bring to their ancestral table. So I had to do DNA. I had to do research. I had to start talking to the older people in my family and, and invoking their memory to tell me what they could remember. What did they hear? Uh, and that's what brought me to voodoo. Mm -hmm. What did my ancestors believe in before colonization? 
before forced enslavement, before forced indoctrination? What did we believe? Voodoo, at its most basic foundation, is first ancestral. We give reverence to our ancestors, those who came before us, those who laid the foundation, those who laid the way. We don't believe that life is linear. You're born and you die and, and that's it. Like many of you who are Christian, Muslim, Jew, we believe life is a continuance. And then we evolve from this plane to the next. Some of you call that heaven. Uh, many names that we have for nirvana, for this higher state, this spirit state that's outside of this physical realm. I think also it's important in understanding voodoo that we talk about quantum metaphysics. Um, when I was in school and getting my education, math was boring, science was boring, didn't want anything to do with physics, none of that because it was being presented to me in the school system in a way that was not beneficial to me, that didn't resonate to who I was. Uh, after this awakening and God saying, learn yourself, I started eating up those books, 20 years old. I'm at the library just reading volumes of math, science, quantum metaphysics, physics. And that's where I understood that in order for our reality, this physical world, but also this reality that we all sort of conceive in our mind collectively to exist, um, science says that we have to exist in 11 dimensions at once. One of those dimensions is space. One of them is time. Uh, location is critical to time. So spirit is more real for me than what's physical. If you believe in the law of attraction, if you believe in speaking positive and that positive comes back to you, then you also believe that the spirit realm is more real than what's physical. We've got to conceive it up here first before it manifests out here as a product or something that we write or something that we physically create. So voodoo is not unlike any other major world religion. We believe in God, we believe in heaven and hell, but we also believe in emissaries. Catholics call them saints. Some Christians call them angels. Now my mother and father are evangelical Christians. They don't believe in angels. They don't believe in saints. So are they any less Christian than the, the other Christian? So in voodoo, we believe that God handles everything, all powerful, all knowing, but then has also given that power out throughout creation. If God is everything, is everywhere at all times, then he's in this wood, he's in this human form, he's in the air we breathe, he's in everything. And science backs that. Science is, is, is desperately trying to seek the dimensions and the uh, uh, ramifications for what they call a God particle. Yeah, Some, both, uh, something that would prove the existence of a greater being, a greater consciousness. But I believe we're all a product of that, and that's reinforced in voodoo. Um, we sometimes say God self. Uh, we have a concept of ORI, o -O in the Yoruba branch of African traditional religions, which really is a translation of your God self, your higher self, you at your Christ consciousness level. So we believe God is almighty, all encompassing, but he's in all of us if we would just open up to tapping that. And so voodoo allows us to connect with nature and the power of God in every facet of our, our life, not just at the church, not just at the temple. He's in the water, he's in the river, he's in the stream, he's in the ocean, he's in the air, he's in the plants, which we call Iwe. The healing is in the plants, not just in terms of how we eat, how we live. We've taught a lot of uh, artificial ways of living in Western culture. We're eating things that aren't real food. We're eating things that aren't natural to God or are to the plant. Uh, for me, that's bad voodoo. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the pastor is giving you a God spell if he's not giving you the truth. All right. All right. We, uh, Prince, I know you said you have a, a, a radio show that you do. I do a daily blog talk radio, blog, B L O G, blog talk radio show dot com mm -hmm. forward slash the 
divine prince. In between the divine prince, you need to put that hyphen, mm -hmm. that subtraction mark, that mm -hmm. dash, in order to pull up the URL. My live listening and call in number is area code 347 215 8967. Every day, um, originally, I'm in my 10th year. Originally, I did a three hour broadcast every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it got to be too much. Right. Um, I started doing movies, TV, expanding the ministry, uh, and so now I just do a 30 to 45 minute broadcast every day. Uh, occasionally I'm on set, I'm, I'm performing, and I'll miss a show, but the luxury is you can listen to my show in archive at your leisure 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's at blogtalkradio.com forward slash the hyphen divine hyphen prince. All right, and for those of you that uh, were not able to get those numbers down, you can give us a call. We we'll have all that information, and we can get that information uh, to you. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that we have uh, Minister Sharon Bright uh, is joined us on YouTube, uh, Brother uh, Bartholomew, uh, Sister Thomas, uh, Brother Ryan uh, posted a comment, creation is the Almighty made manifest in the flesh. Uh, everything is a manifestation of the Almighty, that which is all things. We have Sister Lauren. Ashe. Ashe. Right, Sister Lauren has uh, joined us. Uh, all, of, all, of, all of our uh, Facebook um, participants, you know, thank you for, for joining in. And please, you know, if you have a comment, leave your comment. Okay, Sister uh, Linda. Uh, thank you for, for uh, coming and uh, joining us on Facebook. Uh, Brother Tanner, we heard the Divine Prince speak about how he came into uh, be associated with the religion of voodoo. Cool. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you became involved and what your current position is now? Well, I came into voodoo really I mean, out of Christianity, out of uh, studying theology and studying, I mean, being raised by uh, a pastor. I'm a son of a of, of a pastor. Um, my mother's not an evangelical, but she's a devoted Christian. Um, me, myself, I just, I was searching for a real stronger connection to, to spirit or to God or to myself. Um, and I was not getting that in church. Um, there was no examples of that in church for me, to be honest with you. Um, and I, I really feel like, I know the, the topic of the discussion, it really took me out of the church and took me into other avenues of life. I knew the world was bigger than just the church. You know, if God is almighty, God can show himself with me flying in a plane or a helicopter. So therefore, I, I looked outside of the church and I found, uh, I started doing some meditation, um, studying Eastern religion. And I also, uh, I went through, <laughs> what, uh, Muslim religion, um, specifically uh, Islam, um, studied other uh, religions outside of that, uh, Jehovah Witness, their religion. I've done, I mean, I've studied Christianity for the most part, but um, as I went through that, I just didn't, I just seen some of the same similarities of just being at a certain realm of, spir of awareness spiritually. And I was just like, this is not, this is not how and a lot of manipulation, in a sense, in those religious systems, and a lot of male chauvinistic energies in those religions. And I, I did not see spirit, I don't see spirit as male or female, I see spirit as what it is, it's just spirit, it's energy. Um, and I don't, um, I just didn't connect with it. And I was just like, you know what, I have to continue to, my journey in the spirituality of, of life to figure out what connects to me. And I actually came here uh, to New Orleans like a couple of, uh, three years ago, back to New Orleans, and I, I really didn't study voodoo or African tra traditional religion, specifically where I was at, uh, which was in Florida. And I um, didn't have no one specifically there that really could even teach me specifically about it, to be honest with you. The access to that, I, a lot of that information that I had uncovered about African, Africa and their religions and the that was through um, access online, through YouTube, through um, professors that studied that, anthropologists that studied that um, throughout their lifetime. Um, 
one of them is Dr. John Henrik Clark, um, Dr. Yosef uh, Binyakin. Binyakin. Um, those individuals that really dedicated their lives to really telling the story of Africa and how they, uh, um, how it relates to America's African Americans, and, and it really spoke volumes to me. But I never really ran into someone that really could give me the teachings in person. Um, I actually met Divine Prince on set for a television show we was working on, a, a film, one of them too. I think we were doing Turbo Tax. Yeah, one of those things. <laughs> but um, what happened was, it was just a, a real connection that I had with him. I didn't know exactly what it was, and I'm always a person, I'm, I'm a likable person, so, and I feel people's energies, and me and him just started talking, like, and communicating, just like, hey, hello, how you doing, just casual conversation, and it continued on into you know, really, what, what do you do? And just asking questions about certain things that he, I could see he was kind of involved in, similar to me um, studying, like, at the time, meditating. I had collected some crystals and some, and I was wearing them, and I was actually meditating with them and doing other things with them that were uh, spiritually uh, awakening myself. And that drew me to uh, the Divine Prince. And that built upon that, upon to many other layers that we've done now, uh, masking Mardi Gras Indian, to get involved in that culture and associating that culture with masking ancestrally to, to the uh, culture of Af traditional religion and voodoo. And I just, it's just something that is, I'm growing in now, something I'm growing in and I'm understanding that it's something that you will continue to grow in. It's not something that you can, you'll reach a ceiling at. Because it's so, I don't know what word to use, but it's, it's very broad, the religion of, of, of voodoo. And it's not it's broad speaking in reference to the understanding of spirit, understanding of God. You know, no one would ever understand who God is or know God. So therefore, this journey has really given me a more clear and precise and tangible um, approach to spirit and approach to God. Right. Well, you know, uh, listening to uh, Brother Tan, listening to you and listening to the Prince, um, there's, there's a common element that's running through that, and that's the, the search for something else beyond what you all had come up through, okay? that, that search. I uh, think that's very important to note. Um, we're 20 years apart in age. Mm -hmm. Brother Tan is 30, I'm 50. Um, so I think it speaks generationally. You know, I was around in the late 60s going into the 70s. Um, I had grandparents that could talk about the Marcus Garvey and the Garveyite movement from the 20s and the 30s and the 40s. I now had parents that could talk about the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. Mm -hmm. And so we now have a unique set of humans on the planet right now who've seen a lot. And then you add technology to that mix. Um, and, and I want to speak more specifically to that. Brother Tanner, his age, that demographic, the millennial, the disillusionment with organized religion is not just for the old, it's not who are, might be burnt out on it, they've seen it all their lives, but the young people are just not taking it anymore. They're just not. Um, right. You're and not that, seeing... And that brings us right into our topic now, and that's the conflict between religion and spirituality in the black community. So we're going to really focus, hone in on that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and starting that out, there's a couple of concepts that, uh, that we need to define for our discussion purposes mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. we are kind of in agreement, understanding what we're talking about. Uh, before we do that, uh, Brother Jeff, uh, Brother Tony, uh, GW, uh, Sister Saja, thank you for joining us on Facebook. Uh, but let's start out, as we say, the conflict between religion and spirituality. So let's define those two terms, mm -hmm. uh, religion and then spirituality. And I think we've, we've kind of you know, danced around a little bit, but let's just refine a little bit more as we get into this discussion. Religion is the, the, the study of theology or a particular religious uh, uh, culture, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism. Um, 
then there's spirituality, which is often seen as something that we feel and it's organic and it's how we connect and what feels right for me. Now, an issue I have with that is throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I believe we as Africans created religion. I understand being disillusioned with church, organized religion, organized religion's role in enslavement and white supremacy and the continuation of those systems. But I think, again, when I start speaking to the millennials and the younger generation, it's a mistake to just toss all religion out. Figure out who you are. Go, that's why I say go back, take the DNA, find out if you're Yoruba, if you're Iwe, if you're Khan, if you're Irish, if you're German. Find out exactly who you are and start there and then walk it forward. Um, New Age spirituality, and I use that very intentionally, says I'm my own God. I can do it my own way. I can do my own thing. I can take a little bit over here and a little bit over there and mix it up and, and call it whatever I want. So one of my issues today is with this a growing black pagan or black witch movement. And what it primarily is, is, is young people, primarily, there's some 40, 50, 60-year-old participants in that movement. But it's primarily a millennial movement. They don't want the hassle of learning, initiating, studying something, going through the protocols to have access to something. So there's a lot of uh, conflicting energy around what spirituality is today and what religion is. So you'll hear some black people say, well, we don't have religion in Africa. We just have spirituality. Well, that's not true. Absolutely, we have religion. We created religion. We birthed Christianity. We birthed all of these world religions on the continent of Mother Africa. But spirituality is where we move away from just being religious going to the same house every Sunday, mm -hmm. sitting on the pew for two hours, going home, and then you leave that at the, at the house. Um, in my opinion, spirituality is about result-oriented work. It's your demonstration. It's, it's what you believe, what religion you choose, the doctorate, spiritual, scriptural texts that go along with that religion. But if you can't call on it when you need to pay your rent, mm -hmm. if you can't call on it when you're sick, if you can't call on it when you're feeling lonely and despondent and, and desperate, then you're being religious without any real connection to spirit or, or God. All right. The, uh, some, some uh, right now, comp is going about uh, folks are busy playing church. Yeah. Uh, but come in there with the... Yes, Brother Ted. I, th I mean, just to, just to shed some light on what he was saying about religion, I look at a very practical uh, sense of religion. Um, I'm a big uh, researcher, and I look I look at religion from its root word and from etymology, which means to bind, to bind together. And I think that a lot of, he speaks to the millennials and their, our pushback on religion, that is more so because of what we was to, what we, what we was binded to, I think. Um, and I think that we have to do the homework to figure out what we need to link ourselves back to um, to really feel comfortable or feel like ourselves. Um, and I think that's where the disconnect is. Spirituality, I see that just as a continuance of growth of, you know, of, of not, not, nothing you really bind so much to, but something that you share a, an experience with. All right, we're going to come back to that, that, to that thought. But I understand we do have a caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm sorry I'm calling so late. That's all right. Minister, how you doing, Minister, Minister Antoine Brown? Minister Antoine Brown, I want to say congratulations to your panel. And, uh, yes, I do have a TV show that I love. I love what I do. I thank God for it. It comes on at 8.30 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. on Mondays. Right, and you're in Baton Rouge, is that correct, Minister Brown? Huh? Are you still in Baton Rouge? Oh yeah, I'm in uh, BR right now. Mm -hmm. BR and uh, thank, thanking God or or just just for life, I say for life. And I was listening to the panel just a while ago. I agree too, man. This 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 generation, you gotta honor your prayers, honor your prayers over this generation. 
All right. You know All right. Man? Go right ahead, Miss. And God, honestly, I'm going to say God, honestly, honestly, because I haven't seen it work in my life. Let, let me throw something big. I got two, not just one TV show, but two. All right. All right. And God. thank God for how, he, how he's using me. All right. Thank you. Also, I guess I miss my mother-in-law. I won't leave leave that car. Mm -hmm. Miss my mother-in-law and my my baby. She's still in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. Keep her lifted up for me, if you don't mind. And yeah, we'll keep them in prayer. That, yeah, Valerie, Vanessa Ross. All right. Keep her lifted up. All right. And I just thank God for my life. That's about all I can say. All right. And thank other lives that need to be saved and touched and delivered around the world. All right, Minister Brown, we thank you for calling in. We're going to make sure that we keep uh, keep your family in prayer. Uh, all, right. all right. Thank you, I brother. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, this is my, my baby girl. I'm not my baby girl. I'm a big girl in Houston. Thank you for for joining in. That. And all of you that are watching uh, on Facebook that join in, please share this post. Uh, invite your friends. Share it with your friends. Uh, my, my middle girl, uh, Nikita, thank you for tuning in, daughter, and uh, see Brother Rube, Stephen Rube, join in. Uh, with, you know, there's a comment that you made. I want to go back to this. Uh, and again, all of you that are watching uh, through Facebook, please share the post and invite your friends to join the discussion. Uh, Brother Tanner, there's a comment that you made a little bit earlier, and that was this concept of spirit equating with energy mm -hmm. and I want to tie that comment in uh, with a comment that was made by the divine prince and that was a comment relating to uh, quantum physics mm -hmm. and this this God particle uh, this Higgs boson mm -hmm. that scientists and we're not talking about religious folks or anything mm -hmm. else like that mm -hmm. scientists uh, this this basic matrix that everything is supposed to be a part of connected to. Mm -hmm. So that concept of energy and this God particle, y'all could just go into that a little bit. Well, I would say that, yeah, I, 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 the way I look at life, I remember one time I was actually at LSU and a guy asked me, he's like, man, what do you, what do you, what do you uh, think of life? He was one, a young guy, and I was just like, life is energy. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Um, I really look at that from a very uh, practical point of view as it relates to so many things in my life. Energy as, in ref as it relates to um, your passion, um, in reference to doing and obtaining um, goods and services and so on and so forth. Um, like what you work, for, what do you do for a living? Do you really love what you do? Love is one of the most strongest emotions or energies that you can have. And, Emotions are just energy in motion. That's what emotions are. Mm -hmm. And if you, people really understand that, they really can get a grasp of how to build community, how to build uh, their life, their community, their household, then to the community, then to business, then to outside the business, to city, state. And we can really, we can change things if we can change our mind, if we can change the way we look at things, if we can change the way we approach how we uh, approach life. Um, right, you, the yeah. word for me is family. Mm -hmm. We've lost connection to family. Um, many people are seeking not only church, but other religions, other gods, other lifestyles for a lack of family. They don't feel connected to their blood relatives or, you know, to their siblings, their, their neighbors, their friends. Even with all this stuff, and technology and materialism, people feel a general sense of emptiness and di disconnectedness. We see a lot of it displayed in social media. No matter what the religion, no matter what the economic status, all the depressive, sad, I'm lonely, I'm bored, I need something to really satisfy an instant My ego. ego or flesh-based the need. And we're not willing to go deeper. We'd much rather take a pill and ask it rather than to look at, well, what am I eating? 
And should I keep eating this same thing every day? Brother talked about energy. Um, I'm surprised that he skipped one of his specialties, which is physical energy, how, how to eat to live, how to work out, how to uh, put the proper things in your body. So if you're not putting health into your body, then we can't expect to think healthy, operate in a healthy way. Many of us are getting by on non-food. The, the ingredients that we put in have an impact on how we operate. We have a, a, a call. We're going to take a call, and then we have a comment that's direct to you, Prince. Call, are you there? Yes. Hello. Hi. Yes. Yes. Hello. How you doing? Doing well. Why don't you just give us your first name? <coughs> my name My name is Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S. All right, Brother Thomas. Uh, you have a comment? Yes. Go right yes. ahead. I wanted, <clears throat> I wanted to know, uh, talking about all this, I wanted to know all this. I just wanted to know, because I have a lot of friends who don't believe in a lot of stuff, and I be trying to teach them. Should I keep on teaching them? Right. Absolutely. Um, I would say, however, more importantly than sort of trying to get people to read your books or to read the things and take interest in what you read or study, it's in your demonstration. And when I say demonstration, what you believe, what you think you know, what you've studied, all that you've learned shows up in what you do, your demonstration. So how you live, how you role model your beliefs, I think will reach your friends and your peer group a lot more than trying to prophetize or evangelize or sort of force people uh, into a very rigid view of how you see the world. Whatever that religion is, um, there are people that are pushing Islam today, Hebrew Israelite today, Nuwapian today, but when someone passes away or someone becomes ill or we hit a roadblock, what we truly believe then comes to the surface in what I call your demonstration. So if, if they're seeing you handle life on life's terms in a way that's in balance for what you believe, then you'll have a much deeper impact on, on those that you're trying to reach. All right, Brother Thomas, thank you uh, for, for joining us. And this wait, question. one more thing. And who is the man with the hat on his head? My name is Joshua Nylon Tanner. Brother Joshua Tanner. Okay, and I wanted to know, do you have a number, like if I needed to get in touch with you personally? We accept requests, comments, emails, emails, appointments at divineprince at houseofthedivineprince.com. Okay, thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you, Brother Thomas. Yeah, now we have a, a Facebook comment, and this is direct. This is uh, Sister Cherie. Uh, it is directed to you, Prince. Uh, what does ethnicity have to do with the true and living God? There are people of all walks of life and ethnicities and all types of religions. And I absolutely agree with that. God created ethnicity. God created diversity. It is ungodly for us to seek to control that, to manipulate that. So the fact that we all now speak English and have lost connection with our ethnic dialogue also feeds that breakdown in communication that we have right in our own communities. Mm -hmm. I can't communicate with you, you can't communicate with me, and you're communicating using someone else's words, someone else's belief system. So in the discovery of who I was, DNA was crucial, and DNA will reveal ethnicity. There are many in our city who believe themselves to be black Indians, and they believe that to be a genetic fact. And many of them have not taken any DNA, are operating on faith, on belief. You know, so ethnicity absolutely matters. I don't think God would have created a world with ethnicity uh, if he thought it was irrelevant. All right. We have another caller. Caller, are you there? I am. All right. If you if you turn your your TV down, uh, oh, yes. and just listen through the phone. I think God would have created a world. All right. Just listen to. All right. How you doing, caller? 
I'm doing all right. How are y'all? Good. Yeah. Right. Uh, would you get your first name only, please? Uh, Latoya. All right. You have a comment? I do. I just wanted to. Um, I am present for Josh, uh, for Brother Joshua and, and uh, the Divine Prince, but I just wanted to give a uh, level of gratitude and thanks for the open discussion on bringing millennials into religion and spirituality, uh, talking about connecting your ancestors um, through your practices and the idea of what they're putting out in social media, what they're putting on Facebook. It's, um, it's so easy now to Google things and to look up, you know, these little paragraphs and memes and things of information that sometimes we can get lost and feel like, well, that image fits what I'm trying to do right now, so I'm just going to go with that. But there is um, a level of sacred work that goes into finding your spirituality, finding your religion and your ancestors and your elders. And I think without elders like the Divine Prince guiding, you know, millennials and, and younger generations in, in there, it, it's quickly and easily for us to be lost right. in, the, in the area of spirituality. All right. Thank you, Sister Latoya. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank discussion. you. We certainly appreciate you. you know, we yes. really Absolutely. do. Absolutely. You know, Thank you guys so much. Continue talking. I'm watching. All right. <laughs> you know, this show you how the spirit works. Right along with that, there was a comment that was made uh, earlier, uh, Prince, and uh, I think you used this phrase, and that's the law of attraction. Of course. Okay? So the spirit is going to have each and every last one of us where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it wasn't by happenstance or coincidence <laughs> that we're together now and that these viewers and, 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 and uh, Facebook watchers are, are participating. It was supposed to be this law of attraction. Yeah. So we, we, gonna, we have, uh, man, this, this time has gone by so quick. You know, we have about another 10 minutes left in the show. Uh, so we want to make sure that any information that we need to get out there. And one thing, your website? www.houseofthedivineprince.com. Uh, please feel free to email me, send me your questions, comments, even Sharice. I'll be glad to go much deeper into my answer to that question. Uh, I would like to ask you the love of which God? The God who enslaved us? The God who allows hunger to survive? The God who allows homelessness to survive? Which, which God are we talking about? And God is a very coded word in the black community. Again, going back to your topic, mm -hmm. religion versus spirituality. spirituality. We've become very religious in our commitments to this system that doesn't benefit us. Mm -hmm. that, that's watching the homeless, the elderly, the aged, the needy, the disabled go without while we build million dollar churches, million dollar temples, pastors driving luxury cars, and they're surrounded by some of the poorest communities in our, in our, in our nation, and particularly in the black community. So God sees ethnicity. God created ethnicity. And I think we have a responsibility to, again, demonstrate what we say we believe as a religion comes through spiritually in how you operate every day, who you show love to, who you show peace to, who you can embrace who you can open your door to. That's the love of the God that I know. And love, people speak of love and think of kind things when they talk about love. Love will tell you when you're wrong too. Love will tell you when you're right. So love just don't work one way. Love how to forgive, how to build bridges. All right, we, we have a comment, a Facebook comment. Uh, Brother Ryan, would it be fair to say that we as people are the instrumentalities of the Almighty? And as such, it works through us to carry out its plan. Absolutely, my brother. Absolutely. The problem is, is that we've been taught a God that exists way out there and is separate from us. A God that is going to reward us on the other side. A God that's going to meet our needs tomorrow or the next day. And many of the people who come to me, some of you are wanting to ask, who would come to this guy? Who would call this guy to seek help? Pastors, bishops, imams, attorneys, teachers, lawyers, regular folk who cannot go to their church and get a sense of family, cannot go to their pastor and get an hour of his time to 
address what the issue is. Again, if you can't demonstrate it, it's not religion, it's not spirituality, in my opinion. So, yes, we are indeed God. We are a reflection of God. We are a manifestation of God. We are a mirror image back of God. But we also are a mirror image of devil if we allow that to come to the surface, if we allow ourselves to operate in that. And the devil has gotten involved, deeply involved, of many of you all's God spell, God spell, and you're in a trance, and you can no longer empathize, sympathize with someone who doesn't share your religion, doesn't share your belief. I don't question people on their religion when they come to me for help. I don't prophetize my clients to become practitioners of voodoo when they come to me for help. As the caller suggested, she had her own desire, her, her, her own need, and we found commonality. Your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews feel lost. And they're sitting on your pews every Sunday, and they feel lost, disconnected, and isolated from you. So they are seeking traditional religious experience, indigenous religious experience. And that's why we're here. All right. I understand we have another caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Oh, that's loud. How you doing this evening? Okay. My name is Raymond. All right, I brother just want to call right. and let you know I've been looking at this program the last two weeks, and I've never seen a program like this. It's been excellent information, very, very informative, very, very informative. Right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for calling in, Brother You're Raymond. Uh, you know, you, you touched upon something uh, just now, you, your comments, and this is uh, a topic that can go for another two or three weeks. But that, the good and evil, okay? the good and evil, and that concept of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Brother Ted. Good and evil. Um, my opinion, I, I see good and evil. How do I see good and evil? I see good and evil in many different ways. I don't look at it in black and white. It's all a matter of pers uh, perspective. You really have to do the homework to really figure out what's being told to you or what's being said to you or what's being communicated to you. Whether do, do you know evil. the difference between good and evil? I know the difference between good and evil in the sense of well, what's well, so, moral. No, well, good and evil. Well, okay, so now, now when, when, you, when you use those terms, mm -hmm. you're judging. Yeah, of course. Okay. That's why I don't really use those okay, terms. So good and evil. Right? I, don't I really use, use those terms. words specifically because sometimes when people think about voodoo or what voodoo is or what indigenous culture or practice is or what spirituality is, they automatically make the assumption that we can then no longer distinguish between what's good and evil. That it's all then becomes a gumbo mix of whatever we want it to be. Uh, there's definitely evil in voodoo. There are things that we're not allowed evil? to do. Evil is that thing that works against God, that thing that works against life. Can something work against God? Absolutely. How, how can that Absolutely. be? Absolutely. Uh, the church has managed to work against God in that we have created an illusion of separation. So we now see God as something out there as opposed to something that's in here that we control, that we direct. So it makes it easy for us to pass the homeless guy sitting on the sidewalk and not feel any empathy. It makes it easy for us to go into a, a movie theater and shoot up people. It makes it easier for people to get behind the wheel of a car and, and feel completely autonomous in that space, which you know is an illusion, but they think they can say anything to you or be aggressive and, and that doesn't somehow have a repercussion. Uh, so there's definitely evil in the world. There's those who would seek... But where did evil come from? What do you mean where did it come from? It comes you, from you, you and I. Well, but you said it's in the world. We're in the world. So where did we come from? If God is in us, so too is evil. You are just as much devil as you are God. Now, you heard the prince come on this show and tell me that what? I got just, devil in me. You're just what? as much devil as you are God. It, it, there's, a bold, there's a bold brother here going to come on the show. <laughs> if you're not operating in spirit. All right. If you're not operating in spirit. Right. And, and that's something we've got to say. All right. Because we think it's pastor, it's reverend, 
It's yeah. evangelists. They couldn't possibly tell me anything wrong. Right. They couldn't possibly do sit back wrong. and do anything yeah. evil. Yeah. But yet we have children being molested, young boys and girls being violated, yeah. women being conditioned to stay in domestic violence situations yeah. that they absolutely need to get out of. That's Correct. evil. Right. Not, and not, the pastor that sits back and allows that to happen yeah. and says what the Word of God says rather than to pull that sister from danger, situation. you're operating in evil. All right. So that this is, uh, look, we have less than five minutes to go, and this is a, a discussion. This is really, really getting good. You know, this is getting good. And, and when we get down and uh, get down into the, into the, the, the down and dirty, the nitty gritty of it, mm -hmm. uh, examining, you know, who we are mm -hmm. and what we are, if, if we really identify ourselves as being more than this manifestation, That's more right. than this physical being, mm -hmm. if we get, if there really is a spiritual component to us in that spirit realm, is there good and evil in that spirit realm? Is there any existence other than the one? There's definitely good and evil in that, in that space, in that realm. Anyone who's ever dealt with depression, mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts, those demons that chase you when you have an addictive issue, drugs, alcohol, you've seen the face of evil, you know what it feels like, you know what it tastes like, you know what it sounds like. It creeps in softly, just like the voice of God creeps in and speaks to us softly. But we being both the divine, but also having that negative, that evil within us, it's an everyday job for us to lessen the one and elevate the other. That sounds like Show uh, praise to one and, and quiet the voice of the other. When you say having, having both of those, that duality yeah. uh, with the Eastern religion, talk about the yin and the yang. Yeah. What does science talk about? The positive and negative? Neg mm -hmm. That's right. All right. We say, where did my child get that self. from? I didn't raise my child that way. We didn't do that in my house. All right. We, look, we have, we have one. This has been a, a, a heck of a show. We have one minute left, 20 seconds apiece, and then we're going to close it out. Prince? All is truly and indeed a blessing, evil and good. It's a matter of perspective. If you're here to serve the good, you'll see God. God will continue to manifest in your life. And the role of voodoo is to connect us not only with God, God is, we're going to talk about that, God is not man, God is not just a male. We, we've removed the role of the woman, the role of the divine feminine in our culture. Uh, and to me, that's evil. There's, there's nothing more evil than that. Brother Tanner. <laughs> Life's hey, we'll see, we're going to have to come back. <laughs> life's, all, life's all about choices, man. And it's very simple. It's very basic. It's not complicated. Take it one step at a time. Be accountable to your actions and live life. All is a blessing. As we close out the show, thank all of our viewers on TV, on Facebook. Uh, we're going to have to continue this discussion. But in this upcoming week, as always, I pray that that being, no matter what name you know that being by, may that being bless you and yours with peace. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. There are some moments only the forest can...